So we're going to look at 1 Thessalonians 5, and then we're also going to look at Revelation chapter 13. The Bible says in the book of Timothy, in the last days there will be doctrines of devils, and the Bible says at 2 Corinthians 2, we are not ignorant of Satan's devices. So it's important that as we get closer to the last days, uh, we should not be ignorant of what Satan is doing in our world. Now, we do know this, is that as we get closer to the tribulation, America is a main country, the main body of the country, that's going to uh, do a lot of things that will bring in the new world order. But if you look at our current president with Trump, we can see certain paths of what's going to happen to our world. Now, I'm going to give three possibilities through Trump. And I'm going to give three predictions of what's going to happen, how uh, God's going to use America through Trump where the tribulation is going to come in closer. So there are three possible routes that we can do it, okay? So the first possible route, now this one I don't believe, but I always believe it's possible, okay? It's possible that Trump, he could be used by the New World Order system. So he graduated from Fordham University, that's a Catholic university. He's friends with the Archbishop in New York. And uh, there are some signs that he have that's a little bit Masonic. But aside from that, so this is possibility number one, is that the NWO uh, is using him for, now here are the main countries, that is all the action. It's Israel, the Arab nations, And I'm going to put here Russia and communist countries. So we can put here North Korea. Now with Israel, how... Uh, how Trump, the NWO, could use him through Israel. We already see that in Israel's case right here, he could probably use Jared Kushner. Netanyahu, he uh, gave a, a big credit to Kushner about bringing in peace. So through that one, he, uh, America, you'll notice, is the main play through everything. See that? America is a big play through everything. So through Jared Kushner, it's Israel. Arab nations, Mohammed bin Salman. I'll just put MBS right here. Through Mohammed bin Salman, he could conquer more Arab nations, more Arab nations. And then through that can bring the peace treaty with Israel, which the Bible says must happen at the tribulation. So you hear the liberal news media, how much they bring up the fact about some conspiracies, stuff like that, with Trump and Russia. But not only that, how North Korea, how it surprisingly had some peaceful talks. So through that one, you see, the NWO could be using him as a tool to set these things up. You see that? And then 1 Thessalonians 5, you'll notice right here, when there's peace, it's going to be war. The Bible says right here in 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, and you'll look at verse 1. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. Verse 3. For when they shall say peace and safety, then what? Sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. The Bible says that the Arab nations and Israel must have peace as well, right? So the NWO could be using Trump to set up this one with peace and these nations with peace so that the uh, Antichrist could rule over the systems with more ease. But it has to be America that's the main player. There's no doubt. America is the main nation, the main body and player that's going to bring a lot of these to pass because look at Revelation chapter 13. So we read 1 Thessalonians 5, 1 through 3. Now let's read Revelation 13 verse 1. This is the Antichrist. The Bible says right here in Revelation 13, 1, And I stood upon the sand of the sea, and saw a beast rise up out of the sea, having seven heads and ten horns. 
and upon his horns ten crowns, and upon his heads the name of blasphemy. And the beast, so there is the beast, the Antichrist, which I saw was like unto what? A leopard. And his feet were as the feet of a bear, and his mouth as the mouth of a lion. And the dragon gave him his power and his seat and great authority. Now I'm not going to explain right here. So if you watch my other videos, it won't sound crazy what you're going to hear now. <laughs> But I've explained to you why this leopard has to be America. All right, I explained to you in every detail in the videos. I would recommend to watch the videos, Seven-Headed Dragon and Ten-Horned Antichrist. I went through every detail on that to prove it. I also said, uh, talked about what will, anti what will the Antichrist do with the USA. That's the other video title. If you watch those two videos, I explain why this leopard has to be USA. But briefly, we know this is the USA, why? Because the leopard, he covers all three main races where all nationalities come from. Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham with the black spots. Shem with the yellow body. And then the Japheth, Caucasian race, with uh, the yellow tummy. So there's the three races. We also covered right here that he has the feet of a bear. So that represented Russia. Marching forth, conquering and conquer. And we see America's system, it is becoming more socialist more liberal. Uh, but also the mouth of a lion. Uh, that lion represented England. And the main language is English. So we can see that all these things from the leopard matches with America. But not only that, it's the main nation that the Antichrist will use. And if you look at current events, there's no doubt. The main nation within the United Nations, the main nation that's doing a lot of things of unity is the United States of America. All right. Aside from all that, bear and lion. Aside from all that, what I'm saying right here is that what God's doing right now is this possibility. First possibility is that through Trump, the NWO is using him to bring all these peace talks so that it can bring in the Antichrist. Now, I don't believe in that one actually, but I believe it's possible. I believe it's very possible. Number two, what could be the case right here with number two, <clears throat> is that Trump, he's just being a tool, so to speak. He's just being a tool. He's just his own man. But then the NWO, because they have a lot of control, and if you know the history of Jesuits, they always had backup plan with backup plan with backup plan. Because why? If one plan doesn't work, then they will have a backup plan. So rather than the NWO using Trump, Trump is simply being his own man, and the NWO is using whatever actions he does to bring in the New World Order system. Because you got to realize this, Trump may be a man, now I'm not saying he is, okay, but I'm saying he may be the type of person that's trying to do what's best for America in his own way, a lot of people here don't think so, obviously. But uh, Trump, in his own way, he probably loved his country, wants to uh, make America great in his own way. But the NWO, you got to realize this, they're very deep-seated in both parties, whether Democrat or Republican. So it doesn't matter who's in the president, presidential seat. It doesn't matter what Trump does. The NWO, they'll go behind the scenes and use it to bring their new world order system. For example, in Israel's case right here, if you look at some of the capital buildings in Israel, you'll see Masonic symbols all over. So the Masonic elites, you, they already have a handful over there. Uh, not only that, in Israel's case right here, we do know that the Vatican, the Roman Catholic Church, they're all over, so they have great power. If you go to Israel in Christian tours, you'll be surprised how many Catholics are over there as well. A lot of Catholics are over there as well. So the NWO, see, they send in their agents where they can have a backup plan to still set things up. The Arab nations right here. So Trump, he may be trying to uh, settle the differences with Israel and the Arab nations through MBS. But you can see how the NWO can still use that to bring in the peace treaty, nevertheless. And then the same thing right here with Russia and the communist countries as well. What's also very interesting is that if you study some of these uh, Russia and communist countries, some of their spy agencies and some of their political leaders, you'll see a lot of them tied with 
uh, Masons or even Catholics, which is interesting. But aside from that, the point is the NWO, all you have to do is look at all of these political leaders. All you have to do is look at what kind of clubs they participate in. See, the NWO is like pretty much everywhere, is pretty much everywhere. If you look at C CFR, for example, Council on Foreign Relations, and that's just a branch from the NWO. That's not the main body like Jesuits and Masons or Rothschilds. If you look just at CFR officially online, look at all the seats. The names are all there. The celebrities, the pastors, like Rick Warren and other people, you'd be surprised who's on the chair of the CFR. But see, NWO is so deep-seated and rooted already that it doesn't matter what he does because they already have their agents already in those nations to bring it to pass. It could be this too. The third possibility is that Trump, what he's doing is that he is accomplishing peace. So he's bringing prosperity and greatness to our country once more. Now again, I'm not saying that I believe this. I'm just covering all bases because I believe in being objective as possible and being open to all possibilities. It's easy to pick and choose, but I don't believe in doing that, in picking and choosing. I believe in being fair to all sides. Third possibility is that Trump, he is trying to bring in peace and that he is accomplishing and he's making it great again. But you got to realize this, is that so the Lord could be using it like he used Cyrus, right? He used Cyrus to make Israel return to their homeland to bring in peace, but that still did not stop the Lord's plan on what he did with Israel. Roman power still took over nevertheless. You got to realize this, Trump is not forever, okay? He's going to get out of presidency one day. So what's happening is that he could be bringing in peace, but then through that case, once Trump gets out, then the liberals will have a heyday, like they did with Bush, and they're going to scream on top of their lungs, and they get so frustrated with what they did with Bush, that's why they elected Obama. And because people got upset with Obama, that's why they elected Trump. It's going to be vice versa again with Trump when he gets out with the presidency. That's how people are. So they could get so frustrated with Trump because you hear this stupid liberal uh, comedians and you hear the news media bashing Trump, 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 like he's the most important figure in the world and they got nothing more to talk about. They keep bashing, bashing, bashing. So these people get so upset, they can't wait for a new leader. They can't wait for a new president who will make things right. And then they could elect who? It could be that Antichrist who will come into America. And he will rise up out of the sea and they elect the Antichrist finally. And then the Antichrist with peace all set up, then what? It becomes what? War. Do you know what I promised to you? It doesn't matter what these three predictions is. It's going to lead to one conclusion. It doesn't matter how it turns out with these three. All three will lead to the conclusion that there will, there has to be peace. Peace will be accomplished. Peace will be accomplished no matter what. But it's going to turn into war. Yeah, amen. Look at Revelation 6. Revelation chapter 6. Oh, it's shocking that, uh, you know, that Trump, when he went to North Korea, it turned out like that way, you know, in a peaceable manner. It's so shocking. It's shocking to me. The Bible predicted there has to be peace, amen. and it's going to transform into war. That's no surprise to me. Bible's way ahead of you guys. Amen. Look at Revelation chapter 6, verse 1. And I saw when the Lamb opened one of the seals, and I heard, as it were, the noise of thunder, one of the four beasts saying, Come and see. And I saw, and behold, a white horse. That's the Antichrist. And he that sat on him had a bow, and a crown was given unto him. And he went forth conquering and to conquer. Now remember, this Antichrist is first. And when he comes out first, what does the Antichrist bring in? Talks of peace. See, peace. It could be Trump for all I know who's the Antichrist, you know? I don't know. But the point is this. The point is, is that the Antichrist is coming in with peace. But then look at uh, verse, the next verse. Verse 4. Immediately, immediately what? Verse 4. And there went out another horse that was red, and power was given to him that sat thereon to take what? Peace from the earth. See, there was peace on the earth. But now he has to steal the peace away. See that? He takes the peace away from the earth, and that they should what? Kill one another? And there was given unto him a great sword. 
So you've got to realize this. Maybe, maybe, like I mentioned these three possibilities, maybe during Trump's day, they won't establish the peace. But I'll tell you one thing, it will happen. It will happen one day. And then when you have peace, it's going to transform into war eventually.